Welcome to another episode of Studying Like a Nation. Now, today I would like to talk about how do you create and receive radio wave without using the old annoying method of turning the light on and off with an AM radio. And your kids will get a little bit more excitement out of what's happening because it actually explains how does the RC car works. So, to get started, um, the car that I got in front of me, um, the Japanese call them the um, Malconi style, uh, what you call, you know, uh, electric car. Um, but just to make sure that we're clear with regards to the scientific principle behind it, um, first off, let's look at the car first. Take a closer look. Strictly speaking, it's a very simple series circuit. We got a two AA battery supply, and you can follow the red lead. That goes to the DC motor, and the black lead comes back, and that goes to this little funny can up here. And inside the can, you can see a series of um, or numbers of aluminum foil balls and with two contacts on both sides. And also if you look at the contact on the left hand side, there's a, a bit of you know metal wire poking out and that's our receiver. Right? So let's think about how this thing works first. This can up here, strictly speaking, is a switch. Okay? If you don't believe me, let's try and short, short the circuit first. See that it goes to this. Okay. There you go, behave. All right, so there you go. I hope you can see that this is actually acting like a switch. But hang on a second, right? How do you turn the switch on? Well, the magic comes in from here. All right, so this thing up there, it's a old school static shock, uh, how can I say, you know, um, little prank trigger. All right, I'm just gonna turn off the light and show you how this works. I'll dim the light a little bit and uh, so that you can get a close up shot and you can see what's going on when this is operating. Um, on the very top up here, you got an old school uh, magician, you know, a static shock trigger up there, you know, so that you make a handshake, you hide it in your sleeve, you can give you a nasty shock. And when I click the trigger, I want you to observe what happened in the two circles down there. See that? All right, we can see a spark, isn't it? You know, a little bit like the Hertz experiments and such. So you ask yourself, well, exactly what's going on down there? Well, if you look at the manual now, there's an exploded fuel of the transmitter. And a transmitter shows you that number one, there's a gap up there, and there's another spark gap right there. But if you look carefully at the direction, the current is actually going back and forth. So the next question would be, okay, why is that so? Now, if we look at the construction of the transmitter itself, if you go down a little bit further, there's a wire, and you actually measure the length of this wire up here, it's exactly 16 centimeter in length. So what really happened is that's actually a quarter of a wave, or actually say half a wave, sorry, all right, of this particular radio wave. And what happened is, as you generate that electrical spark right there, the charges would get built up and move towards the end of the wire. But mind you that this is not a complete circuit, it actually got nowhere to go. So therefore, essentially speaking, it's actually creating a standing wave, and this standing wave is the electrical disturbance that we're looking at in our radio waves and you know, subsequently generating the radio waves that we're looking at. So where is this radio wave going to, however? Let's take an other look all right, at how this interacts with the Back car itself. the car itself. Now, if you look at the switch that we have up here, that actually stopped the circuit from uh, passing the current through the motor and get the car moving. This switch is made of aluminium foam balls. Now, if you actually are uh, familiar with chemistry, aluminium is a relatively active metal. It would react readily with um, oxygen in the atmosphere. Um, I don't think the camera is actually doing a very good job to show the relative um, dullness of the surface, but you know, trust me, they're not all that shiny on its surface. It's just a camera effect up there. So that actually indicates that there is some formation of aluminium oxide on the surface of these, um, what you call aluminium foam ball. Now, when you think about this, aluminum oxide is not a really good conductor, so guess what? It, the, at the moment, literally, it's an open switch because of the very fact that it's not really conducting. But think about the way in which how radio waves will be received now. So, moments ago, I will just actually show you that this thing is capable of generating radio waves. So, when the radio wave gets transmitted through air, that should be, in theory, picked up by the antennae. And when the antenna pick it up, it will generate a tiny, tiny current in there, just enough for it to um, this, uh, what you call decompose the aluminum oxide and turn it back to aluminum for a very, very short time. Now, aluminum oxide may not be conductive, but aluminum is. So therefore, in theory, you should be able to close the circuit and cause this car to go. 
Well, let's see whether the theory is correct after all. All right, um, I'm sorry, my car actually suffered a lot of abuse over the year. Um, but anyway, to prove that we can transmit the radio wave, you should be able to see this particular worm gear spinning as soon as I transmit the radio wave and cause the aluminum oxide to decompose. So let's give it a whirl, eh? One, two, three, and go. <laughs> How good is that? Hope you enjoyed this particular episode of Studying Like an Asian. Like, subscribe, and don't forget, study like an Asian. See ya.